the third question from Muhammad Sirajuddin Lahore Pakistan most of the Muslim countries in the world are facing problems they are being put on sanctions being boycotted they are being blacklisted blackmailed threatened or attacked Muslims in most parts of the world are being humiliated they are being persecuted oppressed and even lynched according to you what is the solution I do agree with this brother Muhammad Sarajuddin from Pakistan that unfortunately today we find in the Muslim Ummah most of the Muslim countries they are being blackmailed they are being blacklisted their sanctions have been put they are being threatened they are being attacked for no fault of theirs Muslims are being humiliated there are rights Muslims are being lynched what is the solution according to me the solution Allah gives in the Quran is Surah Imran chapter number 3 Verse number 103 where Allah says that wa tasimu bihablillahi jamia wala tafarku hold all together strongly to the rope of Allah and be not divided. If the Muslim Ummah is united, then inshallah will be a strong force and no one will be able to bully us. The problem today is that the Muslim Ummah is divided and we are not close to the Quran Sunnah. The only way that Muslims can be united is holding the rope of Allah. The rope of Allah it is the glorious Quran and the authentic hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So if all the Muslims hold strongly to the glorious Quran which is the last and final revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the things of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him that are there in the Sahih hadith if we hold strongly to this and if we are united then we will be a strong force. Today there are about 2 billion Muslims in the world out of 7.75 billion human beings in the world more than 26 percent of the world population today they are muslims if you see the example of china china about 1.4 billion approximately 18 percent of the world population today they are a big force and they're so big that they least bother about the rest of the world they themselves are 1.4 billion do you know whatever social media that is there throughout the world is influencing the world but it's not influencing China because they have banned Facebook, they have banned YouTube, they have banned Google, they have their own alternative. They have Baidu, they don't have WhatsApp, they have got WeChat. So they have got their own alternative and 18% according to them is, is a big chunk. That's the reason today they are number two in the world. But in many aspects, they are number one. And the way they are developing, coming from very low, the way they have come up in the last few decades is phenomenal. Because they are united, so we have to take the good points. There are many negative points of China, but the good point is they are united and they themselves are a big force. So much so that even America is afraid. What my suggestion is that the Muslims should be united. They can have their country, no problem, but as a whole, we should be united. Today, we have the United Nations Organization, UNO. So whatever UNO say, most of them follow except the big superpower, the five or six countries which have got the veto power. Besides them, everyone has to follow. If they don't follow, then they twist their arm, they put sanction, they put embargo, and they, they have arm-twisting policies for their own benefit. If they want to attack, if they want to take over Iraq, they create false the big superpower america and uk they create false evidence and they attack attack iraq not that saddam muslim was a very good muslim but what right did america usa and uk to attack iraq and after they attacked iraq was worse than what it was before what were the muslims doing they were just sitting they were fighting among themselves we muslims should be united whatever said and done First of all, we should remove, let our differences aside and we should unite. We may not agree with certain policy of the other Muslim country. But on the basis of Quran and Sunnah, we should unite and we should have our own United Muslim Organization. Like they have UNO, we should have UMO. All the 57 Muslim countries should have united. Forget about what we have in the past. We have some organization, but they are not effective at all because they are controlled by one or two we should be united 
on the basis of Quran. If we are united on the basis of Quran, let Quran be a constitution. Practically, not theoretically. There are some Muslim countries, theoretically Quran is a constitution, but most of the things which Quran prohibited is goes on in that country. It's only for theory. We should practically have Quran as a constitution and have united. And we should have alternative. Like how there is a World Trade Organization, WTO. We should have a World Trade Muslim Organization, WTMO. And I'll give you an example. We Muslims, we have the GCC, Gulf Cooperation Countries. The six countries, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, UAE, Qatar, Oman, Bahrain. These six countries are close to each other and they produce oil, they have got petrol and if they fight among themselves, the others will take advantage. So many years back, they made a corporation, Gulf countries corporation, so that they can fix the price, so that everyone benefits. In this way, not only should we have for the petrol, we should have for palm oil. The two Muslim countries which produce majority of the export palm oil is Indonesia and Malaysia. These two countries. So if all the Muslims come together, we'll have control over palm oil, we'll have control over natural gases, we'll have control over petrol. If all unitedly will be a big force and if someone tries to bully us, all of us will be united. Unfortunately today, many of the Muslim countries are helping the enemies of Islam in attacking the other Muslim country because they want to have an upper edge against the Muslim country. It is totally haram to do this. One Muslim country is being partnered with other non-Muslim country to overpower the other Muslim country. This is totally not allowed. We should be united. We may have our differences. But just because we want to prove that we are better than the other Muslim country, we are seeing to it that we are spending money to destroy our Muslim brother. Today we have some of the Muslim countries are spending billions of dollars to destroy the other Muslim country just because they want to be superior than the other Muslim country. This is against the principles of Islam. If all the Muslim countries unite, whether big or small, whether powerful or not, if all unite, if we have a united army, a Muslim army of all the countries put together, then no one will be able to blackmail us. You know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the black gold. We have the wealth. If we unite, we should use this wealth to promote Islam, not to destroy Islam. So if this is there, then we have all the international organization. If there is a WHO, World Health Organization, we should have a World Muslim Health Organization, WMHO. And these health rules should be based on Quran and Sunnah. Unfortunately, we are blindly following the rules made by the non-Muslims. Some may be correct, some may not be correct. So if we have unity amongst all the Muslim countries, all the 57 Muslim countries, more than 2 billion Muslims, if there is an Interpol, international police, there should be an Islamic poll. Islam poll, that is Islamic police. If we have un unity in all aspects of life, and if some Muslim country is breaking the law of the Quran and Sunnah, the other Muslim countries can get together and correct the Muslim country. Why should we allow the non-Muslim to interfere in the affairs of the affairs of the Muslims? So, if we have an internal check amongst ourselves, and our constitution should be Quran and the Sahih Hadith. If we follow this, inshallah, within a few years, within a decade, Muslim countries would be on the top. And irrespective of what's happening today, we find the question posed about the Muslim leaders and the Muslim countries today. There is one silver lining. The silver lining is that there is a hadith, there is a prophecy of a beloved Prophet Muhammad that towards the end of time, and if you go on my Facebook, I've started a series of the signs of the end of the world. Minor signs and major signs. And there are more than 80 minor signs out of which there are approximately 45 that have already occurred. And there are approximately 40 that are pending not yet occurred. And then there are 10 major signs. But towards the end of the world, our beloved Prophet Muhammad prophesies that Mehdi al -Salam will come, Isa al -Salam will come, Mehdi al, -Salam, Mehdi al salam would be the leader and the Muslims would rule the world for seven years. 
that would be the golden years for the Muslims. And that time, inshallah, they will follow Islam and the Khilafat again would be revived. And that time, whether you want it or don't want it, I want it or don't want it, this would be the best time. So there's a silver lining. I only pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may we live till that time when Mehdi alayhi salam come so that at least we will support him. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi has given Basharat that that group of Muslims that will support Mehdi alayhi salam, they have been promised paradise. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he come during our time, during my time and I would be the first person to support him and would love to see how Islam flourishes. And we wait for the time. Till the time he comes, we don't know how long will it take. Few weeks, few months, few years, few decades, Allah Alam. What we should do? We should follow Quran and Sunnah and see to it that we force our leaders to follow Quran and Sunnah and the Muslims should be united on the ban of Quran and Sayyidi. Inshallah, again, we'll be a superpower.